Welcome to UND Insider Weekly. Alongside Brad Schlossman and Tom Miller from the Grand Forks Herald and Paul Ralston from UND Athletics, I'm Tim Hennessy. Gentlemen, uh, as always, busy weekend. It's the month of January, February here. Let's start uh, with North Dakota's hockey trip to Nebraska, Omaha, where they left one point back of the Mavericks for first place in the NCHC and arrived back home one point back of first place in the NCHC. And an overtime loss and an overtime win. Brad, first of all, I, uh, I said this many times over the weekend, you play a five-minute game for three points, that's ridiculous. Saturday night it was a five-minute game turned out for six points. Yeah, they had, uh, you know, as you've, uh, we talked about on the air a little bit, uh, overtimes are huge because they're such a huge swing. You win an overtime game and it's a big swing. Uh, last year at the end of the season, I ended up looking up uh, if they did give a point out for getting to overtime like the NHL or the American Hockey League, how that would have changed and actually two matchups in the first round would have swapped. So um, I'll be curious to see if that's a topic of conversation after the season's over. But uh, the way it worked out this weekend, both teams ended up getting one. So it maybe didn't turn out, you know, if one team gets all six of those points for two overtime games, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. Did you and have a gripe on Friday night with the penalties in overtime? Oh, I thought uh, the second, yeah, I never saw the first one. Nobody was, did. Okay, I was <laughs> behind the play. I saw them call the penalty, and so I can't really talk about that one. The second one, uh, I thought they were going to give an embellishment to the, the player, uh, Ortega, in the crease area, too. And um, I thought that was going to be the call. It wasn't. And uh, you don't see too many five on threes. In over you don't see too many power plays in overtime, much less five on threes in overtime, and ended up burning UND there, just about to get a guy back. One of the interesting uh, quotes that you had in your story is from Drake Kajula on the Friday night game, and I watched it with a, a group of people, and I said, gosh, I thought start to finish, even though they lost the game, I thought they played really well all the way through. There was that little stretch of like two shifts in the first period where Omaha got some chances mm -hmm. or whatever, but I thought UND was playing its game, even though in a loss, I'm like, you shouldn't really feel too bad. I mean, you feel bad from the standpoint you lost the game. I mean, that, that never feels good, but, but Drake Kajula's comment was, well, I don't think we played a, a full 60. I didn't feel, I didn't see it that way, I guess. I, I, it kind of caught me off guard when I read that comment. In the well, area. I guess one of the, the things I thought was key to that Friday night game is in the first five minutes of the game, UND completely dominated that uh, and, and wasn't able to score. I think if they're able to score early, uh, they can change the, uh, the you know, how the game is going to go from there. And that was a key part for Omaha to keep it out of the net. Ryan Mass played terrific, Well, by the I way. think that was the bottom yeah. line of the whole series was yeah. goaltending. It went in as the top mm -hmm. two goaltenders, and I don't think they disappointed. And Ryan Mass had to be better. I think both nights uh, yeah. for them to even be close on Saturday night and for them to win on Friday he night. He was great so. Saturday. Yeah. And th this is a different Ryan Mass than we saw last year or the year before. You know, it, this, He's at a different level. He's a senior now, and that's the number one reason why Omaha's in first place. And I think Saturday night, uh, you know, you give credit to Nebraska Omaha as well. They were playing with Dominic Zombo uh -huh. from, I think, he didn't play at all in the second period, I don't think. And they threw together that line they did, and they played about every other shift with uh, Avery Peterson and, mm -hmm. and uh, Ortega and Gensel. And, and they did a nice job. And North Dakota, just as they have all season, just consistently went along, mind mm -hmm. doing their business, and, and eventually found a way to win. Eventually found a way to win the game. And yeah. that's just how they roll, isn't it? That's kind of been their uh, key, you know. They, they've won a lot of close games. They found different ways to win games, sometimes scoring a lot, sometimes holding the other team down. Now in overtime, and uh, you know Brendan O'Donnell with the game winner, I thought was fitting because that line has been terrific the last three games, four games, and they haven't had any points to uh, show for it. So it's about time they got rewarded. Where do you see this race? At, you know, not only for the top spot, but where do you see things kind of, you know, going here the rest of the way? Is there's still a lot to be decided with everyone? That there is. There? You know, it, it almost seems like every week, and we see a team, and we're like, that's the best team we've seen this year. Then we'll go see Miami, we're like, oh, that's the best team we've seen this year. Then we see Duluth, we're like, that's the best team we've seen this year. So, uh, you know, every week is uh, quite a weekend, and there's a few more to go. I still like Minnesota Duluth, I yeah. guess. They were good. But it's been a long time since we saw Miami, and we it won't has. see them until the end of it either. And a week off for this team, not necessarily a good thing, I guess, because uh, they have everybody back that they that mm -hmm. they wanted back. Everybody. That's the oddest thing in the first week of February to have mm -hmm. everybody on your roster available to play without an injury. And now some of the guys I'm guessing are going to use the extra week to heal up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not be 100%. Let's talk about a little basketball and. Uh, 
Well, you weren't on the road. You were at home, Paul. The men uh, losing to Weber State. That's a pretty good battle with that uh, good basketball team, huh? It, it really was. Uh, it, it was unfortunate, again, a, 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 a potential win got away from them a little bit down the stretch. Uh, Weber State made their shots. Uh, North Dakota missed a couple of looks that they maybe would have liked to have seen gone in, and maybe it's a little different game. But uh, maybe frustrating because for whatever reason, Weber State is the, the bugaboo or the uh, nemesis for, for North Dakota since they've been in this league. Uh, uh, they've had some pretty good success against many of the schools, but Weber State, for whatever reason, they just can't get over the hump. Nice turnaround on Saturday. Uh, you know, shot the ball well from the perimeter against the Idaho State team that plays a lot of zone, basically zone for the entire game. And and uh, I think the team, you know, just were so happy and relieved to get the monkey off their back to to be the team that was ahead at the final horn. That that made a big difference, Tom. Yeah, and they finally stretched out a lead in the first half and kind of. Uh, gave themselves some breathing room because it seems like every game they've lost at home it's a tie game or a very close game at the last media timeout and I think that's part of the newness of this team you know as they're you know they're not they're not young per se year wise in school but they're young together and I think you see that in the in the final four minutes when games have got away from them um, and then this but this Idaho State game uh, you know, they built an 11-point halftime lead. It stretched to 17 maybe in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, gave himself some breathing room, and uh, Quentin Hooker was pretty good in that game. Yeah, missed a triple-double by one rebound, and uh, it was get, got right down to it. It was very close there at the end for pulling off the triple-double. Also, it should be noted that Eston Tyler, uh, in his last four games going into that game, had scored, was averaging about 14 and a half. He got off to a really kind of a slow start in the opening games of the conference campaign. He was averaging about 14 points a game going into Saturday's game and then scored 19 and really was kind of the downtown threat for, for UND. And that's what you need against a team that's going to zone like that is you're going to have to make it stretch a little bit and I th he's one of the guys that can do that for them. The conference campaign, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. The women's basketball team went on the road. Same thing, Weber State, Idaho State. Win at Weber State, lose at Idaho State. Any shock uh, or amazement there? Um, yeah, you know, I think UND would have liked to pick up a sweep on that road trip, but uh, turn the ball over too much. I think they, even in the win against Weber State, I think they had 26 turnovers. That's too many. I think they had 17 against Idaho, but they turned that into a, a good chunk of points, and that was kind of the difference in that one. Um, you know, they didn't play terrible against Idaho, but uh, too many turnovers, I think. You know, you look at it from the standpoint of uh, just may maybe not quite getting uh, the shooting that they needed throughout the lineup basically. Megan Lauk really heated up in the second half against Idaho State and the Bengals but it wasn't enough to overcome. They kind of put themselves in a hole and probably didn't have everyone firing at, at basically the the same time but uh, tough road trip when you split and it hurts you so you know you're they were the only team to win on the road uh, in women's play in the big sky here this past weekend they, they beat Weber State everybody else that was on the road lost and yet you view a split as kind of a tough result for UND women's basketball it's too bad because they they dropped two back from Montana and Sac State kind of fell back to the pack a little bit uh, but Montana having a two-game lead in the race is going to be interesting because Missoula can create such a good atmosphere at home and that'll be tough in the league tournament. Didn't hope. talk about the women's hockey team at Duluth, but we're going to talk a lot more about that as the show progresses. Up next, coming into a big home series against Minnesota, things have started to click for the women's hockey team and head coach Brian Adolski will join the Coach's Corner next. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Cities Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. But when the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. Cities Area Transit, enjoy the ride.
are you guys doing for Valentine's Day? It's coming up. We can talk about that next week, Paul, if you'd like. Well, I got a plan ahead. Join us for the UND Champions Ball, benefiting UND's Student Athlete Scholarship. Mingle with coaches and students. Dance to Minneapolis band Power of Ten. And bid on exclusive UND auction items. UND Champions Ball, Saturday, April 25th at the Alaris Center. Get your tickets now by visiting undalumni.org slash championsball. And women's hockey returns home as rival Minnesota comes to the Ralph. Action starts Friday at 7 o'clock with Pack the Ralph Night as we try to set a new attendance record with $1 tickets. The weekend then concludes on Saturday at 4, so get your tickets at the Ralph Engelstead Arena box office or online on the new undsports.com. Head coach of that team, Brian Adolski, joins us in the coach's corner. Brian, thanks for being with us today. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Got back from Duluth, no problem. It was just late. No, no travel problems. It was just late. <laughs> you guys are rolling pretty well, huh? Uh, we're playing well. It's uh, it's been nice. We're on a decent little streak, executing at a pretty good clip. So uh, it's fun to be around the rink. It's kind of. It's not like you hadn't played well before. I think you'd played fairly well. You just couldn't finish on offense, right? Uh, I, I really felt like uh, the pieces were there, and we weren't uh, closing very well or doing the little <coughs> things you need to do to win hockey games. But uh, you know, I. I team has really figured that out and they're, they're executing what they need to do, how we need to play to win hockey games. It's not always pretty, but uh, I'm proud of that group. Uh, they've come a long way this year already. I guess they're playing a lot of low scoring games here, one zero games, three of the last six, one zero. Uh, what is your, uh, not only your goaltender, but defensively, why are you guys able to win those type of games? Well, I just think that they've embraced, uh, you know, uh, clamping down, blocking shots. I, I really felt like from the word go, uh, our depth on defense was uh, was pretty good to start the season. You see those kids really taking steps and, and playing well and executing well. I mean, you can't say enough good things about the development of Hallie Krizianic and uh, Grace and Hershey, but uh, that whole group's uh, been terrific from Falm and Hamptons really surprised us play well. So uh, I think as a group, uh, they've uh, done a great job and really have uh, come and gotten better every weekend this year. All those one nothing games, are you think you'd throw in an empty netter or something? Somewhere along. <laughs> you know what, there's something about the empty netter. Lord, we practiced it even. Like, <laughs> we could have you know, probably had a nice uh, couple 2 nothing games there, a little easier on the heart down the stretch. But uh, you know, uh, we, we embraced the hard way of doing things and uh, gritting it up. How about the Golden Gophers coming to town? Talk about them a little bit. Well, uh, you know, they've been probably the upper echelon of uh, women's hockey here for the last couple of years. So uh, we played okay uh, when we were up there the first night, and that was early in the year when we weren't doing really well on the second. And so we've both changed uh, a lot uh, over the course of the season. So it'll be interesting to see how much we have grown and where we're at. So we're excited about it. Do you guys feel you've put yourself in position for the uh, home ice right now? I know you had that big three-week stretch against uh, Ohio State, Bemidji State, and Minnesota Duluth, and you guys have come through that now. Where do you see yourself in, in that race for home ice? Well, I think we've taken care of business. You know, there's still three more weekends, and uh, you know, if we can continue to play like we're playing, I think we'll be uh, terrific and even challenging for third instead of mm -hmm. fourth, which was kind of the original goal. So. Uh, we're playing well. You know, we don't want to get too excited. We want to make sure we keep executing you know, what we're doing because uh, it's working well for us. Now, this is all about right now. I mean, obviously, you want to win hockey games, and that's the proof of the pudding if you're playing well. But it's building towards the playoffs and eventually the tournament. Hopefully, right? Ah, uh, absolutely. And uh, that's what we've been talking about. That's uh, how we've been playing. It's playoff style hockey. There's nothing easy. There's nothing cheap about it. You execute. You do what you need to do. 
You've done, a, you've done a good job against Ohio State, Bemidji State, Minnesota Duluth. Do you need it confidence-wise to take care of business against a team like Minnesota? Well, I think uh, Minnesota's, uh, that's going to pay off in the playoff. If we're going to win you know, a league playoff title, it's going to go through them. If we're going to go in the NCAAs, it's probably going to go through them. So confidence-wise, I, I agree with you. I think this is a big week in the show to ourselves. We're that caliber club as well. And guessing the, the goaltending and defense you have is the type of uh, maybe a formula you need to win a, a playoff tournament or uh, get on a hot streak at the end of the year. Um, but offensively, can you guys up the offense a little bit, do you think, down the stretch? Well, it, we're creating opportunities, and, and that's what you look at first and foremost. Uh, you know, some of those posts go in consistently. You know, those games are different, even in Duluth, if we bury some more of our opportunities. So mm -hmm. we knew that that was going to be an area that, you know, we'd been spoiled in with the Carvinans and Lamarus and uh, Tappanese the last couple of years. Uh, but uh, I like that group. I, they're creating, they're getting better and better. And uh, you know what? If they can figure it out and we can put the puck in, I think you're right. We, solid everywhere else right now. Coach, pack the well Friday night, dollar tickets at I think 7,000 something last year. What, what does that mean to the players and the team, do you think? Oh, that was huge last year. I thought that was awesome, uh, you know, to open the upper bowl for the first time ever for our program and, and just uh, the support. I, I thought that was terrific. And that was a game we came out, we were missing all of our Olympians and uh, we really took it to them probably for the first period and a half. They get a couple uh, goals and it kind of just deflated us and uh, so it's really it's going to be an exciting atmosphere this is a big weekend for us I think more psyche than anything else. Good luck this weekend to pack the Ralph. Appreciate it thanks Coach guys. Brian Adolski and the UND women's hockey team. After the break along with women's hockey being home women's basketball returns to Betty as well and we will preview those games and more coming up next. College hockey traditions continue in the 2015 WCAJ Women's Final Faceoff returns to the Ralph Engelstead Arena. Competition will be intense, so plan for a fast-paced, fun-filled, and family-friendly weekend of the best of women's college hockey. Affordable ticket packages are on sale now at the Ralph Engelstead Arena box office and online at Ticketmaster.com. The 2015 WCAJ Final Faceoff, March 7th and 8th. Get your tickets now. Last year, 5,835 fans watched UND take on Minnesota, setting a new attendance record. And this year, we're going to break it. Come pack the Ralph on Friday, February 6th to see North Dakota women's hockey take on rival Minnesota at 7 p.m. as we break the attendance record again. Tickets are just $1, and the first 1,000 fans receive a free foam stick hat. Purchase your tickets today at the Ralph Engelstein Arena box office and be part of history. It's good the way the players talk about it. Just, hey, this is Omaha. That's what happens yeah. when you go to Omaha. Something happens. Yeah, that's nice. We live in such a fast-paced world. It's always go, go, go. When I'm out for a run, it's my time. It's the best way to start your day. Crossing the line of that marathon, it's the biggest reward you can get. I want my customers to achieve their goals and go above and beyond. I'm Nikki Ledeggi, and I'm one of the running experts at Shields. Cities Area Transit, we go where you go. Did you know that riding the city bus is free for UND and Northland students? I ride the bus so I don't have to find a parking spot, and then I'm always within an easy walking distance to all of my classes. I'm going green, so I ride my bike everywhere. When the weather turns bad, I take the bus. And why not? It's free. Cities Area Transit. Enjoy the ride. Visit UNDSports.com for a full recap of UND football signing day, including a complete breakdown and video of UND's newest commits, all on the new UNDSports.com. Let's talk about some basketball, boys. Some hardcore action will be going on right behind us here at the Betty. Who's here? 
Southern Utah, Southern Northern Utah, Arizona. Northern Arizona. Women's, that's women's plane. That's right. Go the opposite uh, mm -hmm. trip on the road. Which is interesting because uh, until Idaho joined the conference on the basketball side of things here, uh, it used to be you'd go to Sacramento State, then travel to Northern Arizona. So you'd hop a plane. Now with Idaho, it's kind of even things out. They've moved with Eastern Washington. That's allowed Sacramento State, Portland State to be partners. So now when you travel, it's uh, Southern Utah, Northern uh, Arizona, which uh, is I, it's a, a little shorter day on that travel day on that Friday in between games, but really two great uh, matchups on Thursday night when you talk about Southern Utah and North Dakota on the women's side. Uh, Southern Utah has been a pretty good, solid program in the last couple of years. Uh, however, they have lost like maybe their best player, Haley Mandelko, who's really a talented shooter, and they're going to miss her in North she Dakota. She was very good at the Big Sky Tournament. Yeah. She makes, I mean, she makes shots that make you kind of go, how did she make it? What happened to her? Um, I don't know what the injury was, but it sounds like it was a significant one, and obviously it's significant to their team. So the UND women obviously are trying to get two. They know that they really don't have much room for air the rest of the way, if any at all. So uh, it should make for a great matchup here, starting off the first game here at home. Yeah, first like, of all, are we surprised that they're have no room for error anymore? Or are we just taking it for uh, granted little, because oh, they were winners last year? A little bit, you know, um, but Montana is just really, uh, you know, not had much trouble right now. So, um, you know, two game lead in the in the standings, UND has to hold home court because where UND struggled is on the road. So, uh, you know, if they're gonna get back in that race to potentially host the Big Sky Tournament, they gotta hold with wins at home. And UND on the men's side, uh, they've won a couple of road games before they even did win a home game this year, and they go back out on, out on the road. Southern Utah and men's play far different team than they were a year ago. They, they beat Weber State this year. They're a good basketball team. It's a tough challenge on Thursday. North Dakota's never had much success in Cedar City in basketball. And uh, coming up on, on Saturday, Northern Arizona is a team that has tremendous talent in their top five spots on the floor. They're maybe not as deep as they'd like. They've lost some players uh, through attrition and things of that, but their top five are really good. Yeah, but we have Quentin Hooker. We do. Game over. <laughs> oh, right. He's developed it. He's How seven footer do this week? Carson Shanks. I, I think Carson played. Well, Carson played a lot of minutes on Thursday against Idaho State, and I was surprised that his body was moving as well as it was on Saturday. But he had two good weekends, and he continues to develop. Schloss, they're going to pack the Ralph on Friday night for the UND women's hockey against I, Minnesota. I think they'll get a good crowd out there for it, especially the men not playing this weekend. The women are home. They got the dollar tickets. Uh, it's a rivalry game. So, uh, you know, like uh, Brian uh, said last year, they didn't have their optimum lineup, and they played fantastic in that first period, and I think they were a little revved up because of the crowd. Uh, this is a new test for them, though. I mean, uh, Minnesota's at uh, a different level than uh, a lot of teams in uh, the nation. I think they've only lost once this whole year, so uh, this is going to be a really big test for them to see if they can get over the hump and uh, pull off a big upset here, and that would be huge for their confidence too, I think. You follow it very closely. Is it different in women's play than it is in men's play? The confidence factor, the fact that you, I think in men, no matter who you play, it doesn't make a difference what happened the last time you played. Does that make any difference when in the, in the women? Does it I think it can, and, and I also think the talent discrepancy is much more in the women's game than the men's game. If you look at uh, team schedule and results, you know you can tell when they're setting up for an easy portion of the schedule and a hard portion. And one reason that Brian thinks that they can catch Minnesota Duluth for third in the standings is because Duluth remaining schedule is Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio State. That's uh, a lot different than mm -hmm. um, in the UND, who plays two of their final three series against St. Cloud and Minnesota State Mankato. So. Um, chance to steal some points this weekend and then we'll see what they can do down the stretch. That's what's coming up. And coming up on the program, it's our favorite part of the show. Panel lets us know what they're looking forward to most. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields and Grand Forks Cities Area Transit. Last year, 5,835 fans watched UND take on Minnesota, setting a new attendance record. And this year, we're going to break it. 
Come pack the Ralph on Friday, February 6th to see North Dakota women's hockey take on rival Minnesota at 7 p.m. as we break the attendance record again. Tickets are just $1, and the first 1,000 fans receive a free foam stick hat. Purchase your tickets today at the Ralph Engelston Arena box office and be part of history. Welcome back to Insider Weekly, and what are we looking forward to this week, guys? Let's start. Let's start in the middle with Brad Schlossman. Well, uh, no surprise. I'm looking forward to see the North Dakota Minnesota Women's Hockey Series this weekend. Uh, UND has been playing terrific the last few weeks. They're, they've won seven of eight. Uh, they haven't lost in four weeks now, almost a month. So uh, they're playing a really good stretch, but. The University of Minnesota brings a different level in here, and I'm curious to see how uh, UND matches up against the best team in the country. Yeah, when you're in that position in Minnesota, you come in here and say there's 7,000 in the in the stands again. Uh -huh. You use that to your advantage a little bit, don't you? You try to. I, I think whether you're the home team or road team, you have great atmospheres. You try to let that fuel you too, and uh, it should be a great game, a great uh, energy for women's hockey for the sport, and uh, we'll see if UND can pull an upset and uh, you know keep the ball rolling here. Paul. Well, first of all, Arsenal takes on Tottenham, no. and what is known as no. the North London Derb Derby. So, just to just to let you know, that's a big that's a one hat, on Saturday. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, also Dustin Johnson returns to the PGA Tour in the Farmers uh, Only Insurance. Dot com. Yeah, far, far, mm. Farmers <laughs> Insurance. So, anyway, moving Let's past go. that, I'm going to be on the road with the UND men's basketball. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, two big challenges. Southern Utah, as we mentioned, a different team, and they beat North Dakota last year in Cedar City at the end of the year, and and uh, they've kind of just taken off and gotten a little older, a little bit more mature. And then uh, Northern Arizona, as we mentioned, they got a guy named Quentin Upshur, who is just a flat-out scorer, and Asim Dixon, and probably one of the better assist guys in this Yanku uh, point guard, who who's for, uh, is known as the Turkish Mamba, who plays for the Lumberjacks in Northern Arizona. <laughs> so uh, just to let you know, that's what I'm looking forward to and should be a fun trip. Tom? I'll say uh, a couple home women's basketball games. Uh, interesting to see if they continue to play well at home. Uh, each time they kind of slip up on the road, you want to see if it's uh, an issue that lingers long term. Uh, so far it hasn't. Uh, now UND's coming off a road loss. Do they still look good at home? We'll, we'll see this weekend. Yeah, I think I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that. I, I'm, I guess I was in that boat of people that the women's basketball team is just going to roll through this thing and win another <laughs> Big Sky Championship, another Big Sky Tournament, back to the NCAA, and I'd be interested to see if they if they can get some consistency back into their game, I guess. That along with, we missed it last week, the Bonspiel at uh, Southgate. I wish I would have <laughs> yeah. been there for that, but no thanks. All right, guys, let's catch an all-new episode of UND Insider Weekly next Wednesday at 8 o'clock on UNDsports.com and Friday at 5 on Midco Sports Network.